CES posed the unique opportunity to speak with engineers at various board manufacturers and system integrators, allowing us to get first-hand information as to AMD's plans for the X570 chips at launch. We already spoke of the basics of X570 in our initial AMD CES news coverage, primarily talking about the launch timing challenges and PCIe 4.0 considerations. But we can now expand on our coverage with new information about the upcoming Ryzen 3000 series chipset for Zen 2 architecture desktop CPUs. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Open Bench Table, a lightweight and ultra portable test bench built with high quality anodized aluminum and with a modular approach to design. The Open Bench Table is easy to collapse, store, and assemble to test different parts and is one of the test benches that we use in the GN Labs. The Open Bench Table contains everything you need to test PC builds and configurations, and it's available in silver, black, red, and a mini ITX version. Learn more at the link in the description below. We're finally back in the studio, clearly, and I don't know, there might be one or two more CES videos going up, but we're really about at the end of it at this point. But there was some really important opportunities at CES where we could meet with some of the uh, the people we don't normally get to talk to when we're not at a trade show and learn more about AMD's plans for X570, the chipset, and a little bit about Ryzen 3000 series. We also met with AMD on Ryzen 3000 series. AMD was not really ready to share product details just yet. They did share a little bit. For example, the TDP shouldn't really change on Ryzen 3000 versus 2000. That should be roughly the same. But they didn't get much more detailed than that in our CPU meeting. GPU meeting was much more detailed, but that's in a separate video. So this allowed us the opportunity then to instead speak to people like system integrators, motherboard manufacturers, people we can't name in this video uh, for obvious reasons. So we trust the sources of the, this information. We've worked with these people before. They are typically accurate. Uh, however, we should, of course, note that it's not official AMD information just yet. So some of this data could change, although we don't suspect much of it will. Perhaps launch timing, that would be about the extent of any changes you might, you might encounter. So then Ryzen 3000 series, AMD has not officially put a date on this. AMD is officially saying mid-year. And in speaking with AMD's partners uh, who can't be named, that mid-year is more likely a June launch. We're not sure when in June. You could probably surmise that it would coincide with Computex, which is late May to early June. So June is AMD's target based on what their partners are saying. We brought this up to AMD and AMD said, well, you know, we can't confirm that, and maybe let's be careful of saying June because it could change. So AMD might move that launch window around, but currently uh, behind the scenes, the target is June for the CPUs. Now the biggest thing is AMD is trying to leave some leniency for changes in scheduling, particularly with the chipset. The CPU should probably be ready a bit earlier than the chipset. The chipset is encountering a, a few more challenges. They probably will be conquered, but it's just a matter of timing and when they'll be uh, resolved. And so some of this, the biggest point of consideration for launch, has been whether AMD wants to align its X570 chipset launch for the new motherboards with the new CPU launch, because the new CPUs will work in X470 and previous chipset boards. So they don't have to launch with a new motherboard. But of course, it's kind of it's better for the ecosystem. It's better for the motherboard makers. Most users probably want to buy the newest board with the newest CPU. It makes sense. So AMD is trying to figure out how to align those two launches. And depending on how uh, X570 goes, that might be out of alignment. But right now, it does sound like they will likely launch them together. It's just it's totally up in the air at this point for that specific aspect. So despite the fact that the new CPUs will work with the motherboards previously released, X570 will carry with it some updates. And that's what we have information on for you today. So this information, uh, a good amount of it was contained in the first video, the news video talking about Radeon 7. But some of it's brand new here. We obtained this from contacts very close to product development. And we vetted them uh, between other contacts close to product development. So this should be pretty accurate. The previous AMD chipsets were made by AS Media, AS Media, AS Media. And these introduced some early challenges in development for the 1000 series CPUs. They were all pretty much resolved as time went on. But AS Media did do a lot of the design work and uh, handled sourcing fabrication of the chipsets. It is a, a silicon part, ultimately. The new series of chipsets, our understanding is that AMD will be working to design the X570 chipset on its own without Asmedia's help and will be uh, sourcing fabrication on its own. So that's news. Separately, 
AMD is migrating its Epic chipset, as we understand it today, down to X570. So the existing Epic chipset, it'll get some changes, some tweaks along the way, but it is being migrated uh, in more of a one-to-one -one fashion than you might expect down to X570. So Silicon will be updated for Ryzen 3000. The X570 chipset should run at about 15 watts, which is a, a significant change in raw numbers, but not a significant change in cooling or anything like that. And the, the raw number difference, you have 15 watts for your X570 probably versus 6 to 8 for X470. So in terms of cooling capacity, this really doesn't mean anything. When you're looking at a motherboard, I mean, we have an Intel board here. The chipset is, that's the chipset right there. That's it. And most of the companies put these big blocks on them. And uh, although you could argue that, yes, this is for thermals, realistically, no. I mean, you could run this board like this, and it would be just fine, unless you're doing extreme overclocking. And even then, the chipset's not really getting that hot. Chipset can get hot uh, when you start doing things like RAID SSDs. You're really hammering the I.O. on the chipset. But in general, you don't need cooling, or not much of it. Uh, it can be passively done, as you all know. So 15 watts versus 68, not really that significant with regard to cooling, but a significant change in that the chipset will be capable of doing more, at least in its present design, assuming this all goes through. So other than this, the PCH, or the chipset, will likely only have Gen 3, PCIe Gen 3 coming out of it and going to the PCIe slots, but we're not 100% clear on that just yet. So uh, bear with us on that one. That this It sounds like, from what we understand, the biggest point of consideration, again, for the chipsets is what generation PCIe is going where. Because we know PCIe Gen 4 is supported on the CPU side. AMD has publicly and officially confirmed this. It will therefore be supported to the video card slots, the ones that are wired directly to the CPU. But uh, what happens at the chipset level? Is it Gen 4 going to the chipset? Is it Gen 3 going to the chipset? Because there's lanes used there. And then is it Gen 4 coming out of the chipset or not? So what we understand today, and this could change, is that it's likely PCIe Gen 3 coming out of the chipset going to the PCIe slots. Uh, there are some notes here and caveats, though, that we'll, we'll talk about as we go. So CPU, for sure, Gen 4 proper. That's, that's what we know for sh absolute sure. And we spoke uh, about the PCIe lanes going to the chipset previously and with some of our contacts. And we're told that, again, this is the, the sort of the TBD part where AMD's holdups are. It could go Gen 4 for that. So uh, AMD is looking to launch its B550 chipset roughly one quarter after X570. If things go as they are presently timed, then B550 should be roughly quarter three of the year, maybe towards the end of it. Uh, and B X570 should be in the middle of the year, June-ish. So depending on uh, how much of a delay there is, if there is one, B550 one quarter after that. X570's timeline is currently up in the air. Ryzen 3000 should be June readiness, but not necessarily launch. And the launch, again, will depend on the strategy. So as for the significance of PCIe Gen 4, you might likely realize that video cards today don't exceed PCIe Gen 3 bandwidth on a BI16 slot. So there's a few places this is useful. One of them is running with fewer lanes. So you could, for example, go down. It's, it's about 2x the bandwidth. It's about two times the amount of bandwidth with Gen 4 versus Gen 3. So you could then go down to, say, by 8 instead of by 16 to achieve the same maximum throughput potential, uh, although the device is ultimately the bottleneck, generally not the interface. And doing this allows you to reserve more of those lanes for other things. So you have more video cards in some platforms. You could have uh, more RAID SSDs in, uh, in other platforms. It just depends on how they're all wired. But uh, and in that scenario, with regard to SSDs, depends on what happens at a chipset level too. Is it Gen 3, Gen 4? But uh, that's the main advantage, is you don't need as many lanes to achieve the same throughput. Another advantage, SSDs can become limited with the current Gen 3 interface with by 4 setups. So this will allow a solution to that, where you can now develop faster SSDs, or at least put fast SSDs on a faster interface. So that's useful. But otherwise, increased bandwidth is uh, is just useful for reducing the lane requirement to achieve the same thing, at least until new higher-end devices come out. Because dual 2080 Ti's, for example, only really exceed PCIe bandwidth when they're not connected with a bridge. As long as there's a bridge there, you're fine. Uh, AMD should be a bit more interesting because they don't. AMD doesn't use bridges, um, at least not on the present GPUs that are out today. 
So that's uh, there's your notes on Gen 4 and its usefulness and it's where it's not useful, which would be just a single video card, for example, unless you really want buy 8 for some reason. But what are you using the other lanes for then? Just to recap what we already reported as well in the initial news video, if you didn't see it or you've forgotten, we expect that some motherboard manufacturers may enable backwards compatibility for PCIe Gen 4 on existing X470 or similar motherboards. There are two angles to this here. So one of them, with a BIOS update and with a Ryzen 3000 series CPU that would be required, X470 could theoretically support PCIe Gen 4. And the biggest challenge is existing pins traces, the endpoints, could kind of need some modifications electrically, but the bandwidth is there. It can handle the throughput. You just need the CPU to do it. And uh, the downside is that because of those endpoints changing, potentially, because of the electrical twe tweaks that might be needed to stabilize the platform, X470 with an update might not be that common. It, it depends on the board manufacturers. So. Uh, it is unlikely that motherboard manufacturers are going to go back and update X470 on a physical level, but potentially BIOS updates. So uh, that is useful, and it, they would just need to enable a PCIe Gen 4 option in BIOS so that you can enable it and use it. Um, whether or not it's stable is really a completely different question, though, and that'll depend on the wiring of that particular board and if it, if it will work, just from what we've learned from uh, official sources at AMD as well. So. Because the electrical wiring of the X470 boards won't be updated for PCIe Gen 4, it's possible that some boards will encounter issues with uh, stability issues, display out, uh, transmission in general on Gen 4 if being updated according to some of our contacts. Whether this happens will depend on how well the existing X470 boards can handle PCIe Gen 4. And as far as we understand it, for the most part, it's not that different, at least at a, a very top level. But we spoke with some engineers lower down in the, in the companies, lower down meaning uh, engineering-wise, not rank. And our understanding is that there's, there are some, uh, some electrical design changes that need to happen to really make sure that the signal quality is good. I don't know what those changes are, but um, that was the top level explanation I got from one of our contacts. So I think that covers most of what we know about X570 for you. Like I said, uh, unfortunately, and I, I wish I had a better answer for you as to what's happening with Gen 4 at a chipset level, but I just don't. And, and um, we'll update you as we learn more about what's happening there. But depending on who we spoke to, it kind of changed the answer of, okay, is it, is it uh, is Gen 4 going to come out of the chipset? And it sounds like the expectation is that Gen 3 will come out of the chipset, but that AMD is, is still finalizing these details. And specifically, the item of finalization is, is the PCIe version uh, from the, the standpoint of the chipset or the CPU communicating with the chipset. And that's kind of what we're waiting on right now. But the rest of it is, uh, is looking pretty good from a, a standpoint of being final. So yeah, biggest news here, Epic is being brought down to X570. We, we understand that with fair certainty from our sources. So that probably is happening for sure. 15 watts versus 6 to 8, that could change if they optimize things, but uh, not particularly relevant, just something to know. And, um, and then B550 coming in the quarter following X570. So those are the, the main concrete details we have for you, and the rest is just kind of, uh, it, it's a bit more wishy-washy than I wish it were, but, um, but it gives you an idea of kind of what the considerations are right now at the motherboard makers and at AMD. And as we develop the story and learn more, we can get you firmer details on what's happening with regard to chipset features uh, at a uh, with with more certainty. So, hopefully, that gives you some information you didn't already have. As always, you can subscribe for more. We had a previous video on Radeon Seven or Vega Seven, if you prefer. Uh, same idea, and we did that one at CES. The interesting point there is that we got some news from AMD officially that the boost. Uh, routine, the boost algorithm or the boost reference table is being retuned for Radeon 7. So that's kind of interesting. But again, hard to get specific details from any company at these events. Uh, AMD did their best to answer our questions, but every time, you know, it's okay, what does targeted architecture change? What does that mean? Couldn't get more detail than that. But we have what we know in that video if you want to see it. So subscribe for more. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.